everybody, welcome to the start of our show. Now, our first guest is an author, and he wrote this book called The Silver Bridge. Please welcome my good friend, Paul Michael Francis. <laughs> Thank you. It is uh, it's an absolute privilege to be here. Thank you know, you're the first guest I had. You actually adjusted yourself to talk to the audience, but that's great because <laughs> this is our biggest audience ever, and all I had to do was get you to come from Los Angeles. How about this, everybody? Yeah. So, obviously, um, this is your first book. You're a new author, and I wanted to ask you, it, it is a love story, so let's find out, you know, why did you decide to write this book, and then how did it get to you, how did you get to this point now where the book is finally being published? I, uh, as a child, it was my therapy, my release. When things weren't going well, I would turn to writing. And uh, I just wanted to write something that I would want to read. And it's something about hope. And there's so much despair on the planet. And I just wanted to, you know, as a little boy, do something to make the world a better place. And so I did some poems, won some competitions, uh, wrote a few screenplays, and then got. Uh, was just fortunate to have this idea about nine years ago, and mm -hmm. then, uh, that was the inception and the genesis of it, and then fruition just a couple, about nine months ago when I got picked up. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's how long did it take you to get from the beginning of your idea to actually the book is being published? Nine years. Nine years, all right. How about that, everybody? It's Now let's talk about something that's kind of interesting. We've known each other for a long time. In fact, I've known you since I'd say junior high school, uh, maybe even earlier than that because we went to the same church together. Mm -hmm. But uh, you had something you wanted to mention about, about when we first met because uh, something happened there. I did. Um, the man that sits here before us, this meek human being that uh, puts this show together, that just puts on such an amazing performance, um, in essence saved my life. I, uh, I didn't care if I lived or died at one point in my life. I was. Uh, the victim of bullying, um, and Steve came into my life, and when I had, I felt I had no one. My brothers and sisters later on were like, "Why didn't you tell us?" And I'm like, "You know, I just didn't know how." But Steve actually extended his hand and became my first friend when when I felt like I had no one else. So he, yeah, I, I, I'm forever indebted to you. So thank you. Well. I didn't even know that you were upset back then. You were always a happy guy, as far as I knew, and uh, we had some great times together. In fact, uh, how, how appropriate is it right now that we talk about uh, you and I about life, and one thing I always say is, what you're meant to do, you always do in your life at different points. And uh, so if we go back to 1991, it's when I started hosting my first show. You were on the program, and at the time, you were the number one tennis player in Arlington High School. And uh, it, it, this... <laughs> This is a very quick clip because, unfortunately, we had just lost the tournament. Uh, it was almost my fault, but anyway. Uh, and, and you had a quick response here. This is a great clip from 1991, the Spy Ponder talk show with Paul Francis, the guest. Now, uh, Paul, first of all, we're going to go into the sport, and you play tennis, of course. Number one on the team. Tell us about that season, what happened, tournament, bye-bye. Um, well, actually, it was a bye-bye in the tournament. First round to Lexington, we lost 3-2, but... Had a good season, went 10 and 5 overall, and finished third in the GBL. But hey, what can you do? You can Next grow year's long hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it, man. And you still have the long hair. And I think that the ladies will agree it still looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, uh, in your book, mm -hmm. I'm so happy you gave me an advanced copy and I read it. And, uh, and you know, I don't have, have a lot of time, so it's great when I can read the book. And uh, in the book, it's great because uh, it's a love story and these two people go to Greece. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you have a great connection because obviously you're Greek. You spent a lot of your life in Greece. And uh, you, you kind of like are a good person to write this book because you know so much about it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you and, and what, what Greece means to you. I, uh, well, I wanted to give my readers a love story, but simultaneously I wanted to incorporate components of psychology and spirituality and just give them an adventure, give them a behind-the-scenes peek at Hollywood and what really goes on in that industry as well as take them to the Greek Isles and where 
you know, a man and a woman come together and it's uh, their journey and their adventure and um, the battle between love and fear that they face within themselves in the attempts to try to avoid a Romeo and Juliet-esque tragedy and find love and in the Odyssean voyage that they go through together. So, um, yeah. And, I, and also the interesting thing here is, is yeah. you, one of your relatives is very famous in Greece. I was just about to talk yeah. about that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm privileged to uh, be the great grandson of, um, in my humble opinion, a hero. And he was a general and prime minister of Greece, Nicolas Blasidas. Mm -hmm. so. How about it, everybody? <laughs> now, you know what's funny is you, could, I, you and I could probably do a whole 30 minutes here. Uh, but obviously we have to go and we must mention to people, first, I know you wanted to thank your publisher who's in London. I do. I was uh, just fortunate enough to have the prestigious quartet books pick up my novel and then... My uh, editor, who's an absolute genius, Gavin James Bauer, just guided my ship and brought it into port in such a manner and fashion that in my wildest dreams I could have never had have come to fruition. So I'm very and, fortunate. And let's tell people uh, where they can get the book. I know there's a pre-sale going on. Where should they go? Absolutely. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com right now for a pre-order and uh, Kindle December 1st. And you can also go to Facebook and uh, like the Silver Bridge if you want. All right, one last question before we go, Paul. Please. What is the Silver Bridge? Uh, Silver Bridge is a myth that I made up that if you lose someone you love and you believe, you truly believe with all your heart that you can reconnect with them, when the moon comes up over the water's edge, that you can walk across that and reconnect with your lost loved one. It's a great story. Thank Pavlos, you. Paul Francis, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the book is The Silver Bridge. You can find it online. We'll be right back right after. <laughs>